Say a Suzuki making his MVP type candidacy early as he leads the Cubs to a victory. Christopher Morrell, good at the plate, awful in the field. What's going on with Nico? And how did the Cubs almost blow that game? They did come back and win yesterday. We're going to talk about all of that and more right here on the Cubs baseball channel. Make sure you like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. And let's get this thing started with a big hearty. Go Cubs. What do you say, everybody? And welcome back to the Cubs baseball channel as uh, the Cubs were a winner. But it was it was a hard win yesterday with Anthony on Mick talking some Cubs baseball. And uh, you can follow me at Broadcaster Mick. What's your social? Uh, my Twitter is Ant underscore Pasquale three. We'll have to get that one uh, ready for the next show. But yeah, Mick, it was uh, way too close at the end for a game that looked like it was going to be. Uh, pretty easy all the way through. I, I heard JD say on the broadcast that uh, it might be a game that you throw Albert Alzlai in at the end just to keep his innings going, and then it ends up being a save situation for him late last night. Uh, but they did come away with a win. It would have been a really tough one, even though it's April 3rd. Yeah. It would have been a really tough one to to let get away. But it looks like they're going to be the worst team in baseball, Colorado, and, and you come away with a win. Yeah, almost blew it, man. Anytime you're up eight to two, you know, you feel like you got it in the bag. I, there was a few times where the rain started falling. I thought, hey, they're going to bang this. They're going to, yeah. you know, but they didn't. They played through it. And um, it's a major league baseball game. Gary Hughes, who is he's in the open. He's one of the greatest scouts and people of all time. He was the special assistant to Jim Hendry, but one of the all time great scouts. He used to tell me winning baseball games is tough. And he just meant like, you know, it just, it just is never smooth. Right. It's never easy. And that was the case. It looked like it was going to be uh, just like the game before, you know, just basically beat them up and down the field and win. But, uh, you know, some mistakes, the bullpen, El Monte looks like the El Monte that had a five ERA that yeah. you traded for. And um, Naris has not looked good so far, you know, and he's another guy that you're really relying on. Right. But uh, but you mentioned that Alzali coming in and getting the save and you get the win and that's all that matters. You know, you play through those really tough conditions and you blow it. Right. But yeah. you didn't but you didn't quit and you come back and you win Miles Mastroboni. Uh, with the hustle, but let's let's talk about this guy right here, Seiya Suzuki. Now it was his ground ball that uh, allowed, obviously, the winning run to score with Master Boney. But another home run for him, and and when you look at his numbers from what he did last year, at you know from the point that they sat him down, and what he did at spring training, and what he's doing this year, I just feel like that he's really kind of starting to look like an MVP candidate. I know it's early, but man, he's good. Yeah. From August until now, probably, I think he's been the best hitter in the league with maybe Mookie Betts up there, one and two, those two guys. But anytime you're in that conversation, you're obviously doing something right. And like you said, it was one of those games early on that felt like yesterday where you were going to just kind of beat the ball around the yard and, and win, you know, 10, two or something like that. Um, and I was watching the game with my dad and he even said, why don't they get say out of there? You don't want this guy to get hurt. Then he rolls his ankle and everybody holds their breath. Um, but they keep him in there. They ended up needing him in there. And he was the one who put the ball in play that miles Mastroboni scored. I think the official ruling was a, a fielder's choice, but it's essentially an RBI ground out, but you put the ball in play. Um, and, and that was his worst at bat of the day. It was three for five, four runs driven in. I mean, he's been everything they've needed and more. I wonder if they're going to keep him in that two hole or maybe drop him to three or four so we could get some more RBI chances. But he's been great. I'm happy I have him on my fantasy baseball team. I'll tell you that. Yeah, are you worried about Bellinger 0 for 5? And, and I, his batting average is, is down to 208? He started really slow last year too, so I'm not going to hit the panic button just yet. Um, I know last year we weren't, 
quite expecting him to be what he was. And now we're expecting him to be that. And he, he might not even quite get there, but Mm -hmm. I'm not hitting the panic bet button quite yet. I think two nights ago, the home run with the crowd chanting Cody. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, that was cool. (laughs) And I thought that was going to be maybe his break out of the slump swing. Um, but it's still really early, so I'm not too worried about him yet. Yeah, well, I'm with you on that. Now, one guy who is Jekyll and Hyde right now on the diamond is Christopher Morrell. And uh, I, I, I threw this up here. Uh, Chris Kampka, who is just the best in the business in doing uh, stats. If you're not following Kampka on um, the X or Twitter or whatever they call it, you know, whatever you call it, because it's called mm-hmm. X, but it's really Twitter. He puts up some of the best like baseball stats. You, you, do you follow him, Anthony? I mean, he's so good. I do. He's great. Yeah. So this was the one that he put up there today after Morrell for the sixth straight game had a hit and scored a run. So f- for Christopher Morrell at the plate, right? And he, he was in the field at third base and then eventually uh, taken out for Master Boney. But um, 375, he's a spark plug when he's running the bases. Then when he's at the plate, he's, you know, always a threat to hit it out of the ballpark, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Then in the field, he's absolutely terrible. (laughs) There's no other way to say it. He's got three errors, but there's other balls that aren't considered errors that he has. Like he could have at least six by now. Oh, it's, it's like every time the balls hit to him, you're just like this. Like I, I can't watch. Yeah. Hold your breath. I just don't know, like long term. I mean, how long do you go with this? Uh, we're only, in, you know, we're, we haven't even played ten games yet. But at some point, he's got to turn the corner. Last night it was a throw to first base. Then he got another one, and he just took his time and made a great throw, and the inning was over. But it's like, it just, it, and if it's not the throws, it's the fielding. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday, and we were like, you know, it's way too early to start wondering if we should abort this plan but now here we are a day later talking about it again and it presents itself that game after game after game the thing is if you put him at dh third base becomes an offensive i don't want to say liability but a weakness it's not a strong position offensively nick madrigal really solid at third uh when patrick wisdom is healthy he's an above average fielder at third two miles mastroboni if you gave him a spot start there um, would also be above average. My question for you, and I know it's pretty early and probably overthinking things, but with Nico's sort of struggles at second, and we know how sure he is with the glove, what if they just swapped Nico and Morel, put Nico at third, where he might not be as comfortable, but he's better than Morel, and put Morel at second, where he's better than third? Mm-hmm. You're gonna you're gonna take a lot of heat if you say that Patrick Wisdom is above average on, on here at third place. <laughs> but when you compare him to what we're seeing right now with Morel, I mean, feels he like a gold way, lover. <laughs> so, I mean, this is this has been terrible. A lot of people uh, were worried in the comments section, and you guys, I love reading your stuff, and um, and Emma, Anthony will be doing the same thing you were worried about Nico in spring training. And I'm like, ah, you know, he'll be fine. And we're still only, we're not even 10 games in yet. So, I mean, look, we're still, but it's just, the bat hasn't been there yet. Yeah. He doesn't look like the same player. The scoop, the scoop play at first, I'm like, whoa, dude, just get the ball. Think about, you're not going to make that play. I know you want to, but you can't scoop the ball over the first baseman's head and then set them up for, you know, uh, where they're, They've scored two runs instead of just one, but I still believe in Nico. I think Nico's a good player. I, I said that before, and I'm going to say that again. It's it's. I feel more confident in him long term as compared to Morel at third base defensively. Oh, absolutely. I I like Nico as a as the makeup of a player. I think he's exactly the type of guy you'd build from scratch if you wanted to put somebody on your baseball team. Um, I think it's just a slump that happens to start the season with. So it's going to look a lot worse than it would if it was, you know, July or August that he went into some of these struggles, but I like Nico. I think Nico will be fine. Like you said, the the glaring issue is Christopher Morrell's defense at third and putting him at DH, what it does to your lineup. It it just kind of contracts all flexibility. You have Garrett Cooper, Mike Talkman. Mm -hmm. Those are the guys that lose at bats 
when Christopher Morrell has to DH. Yeah. And you saw what, what Cooper did, you know, a couple days ago, almost hit for the cycle. Yeah. I, I, if they have to, they have to put him out there and hope that there comes a point where he figures it out. Someone got in the comment section uh, a couple days ago and said, Hey, Ron Santo made 30 errors his, his first season at third base. You know, he was a catcher. They moved him to third. I, I, I'm looking at Morrell, and I'm just waiting on that turn, you know, mm -hmm. where I start to see it because I'm not seeing it yet. Now, what I mean by that isn't the errors and it isn't the mistakes, but I'm just not seeing that. And, and, and I'm not saying that it's not going to happen. Because it still could. I'm, but what I'm saying is that when you see players start to turn the corner, one great example of it was Victor Caratini uh, when he was in the minor leagues with the Cubs. Got him from the Braves, comes up, and he wasn't very good defensively. You know, they, they, and they're back there, and I'm thinking, this guy's never going to make it. He just isn't. Like, he's kind of lazy. You know, he, he's not blocking the plate. He just doesn't look comfortable. And then all of a sudden, like, I turn around, and I'm like, man, this guy's Kind of, kind of, you know, it's there. I see it. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't perfect, but it was there. And then eventually, like he's in the big leagues, and he's turned out to be a, you know, had a really good big league career, right? But there came that point, and it was like July of that season where he had made an adjustment, or his play had changed, or the confidence, or whatever. He figured it out. I'm looking at Morrell, and I'm saying, I know it's April. I know it's early. But man, I just don't see it. And and what maybe in, in a month, all of a sudden you're like, man, remember back in April where we yeah, were like, hopefully. this guy is poo poo at third base. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, please don't hit it there. Now the other big question, Anthony, coming into the season, I felt like was the other corner spot, and Michael Bush, man, this got three for three. You know, he looks like he belongs. Defensively, he's not Anthony Rizzo, but he makes he he he's not bad right now. I, the, I see this guy like the Cubs might have just got a long way to go, but the Cubs might have might have really picked the pocket of the Dodgers on this deal. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you about that trade a little bit um, today, just because of Almonte struggles. But Bush is it was obviously the target. Before I answer that, want to go back to your last point? I think. Hap is another good example, a guy who really didn't have a position here in the major leagues, mm -hmm. sent them, sent him down because they essentially told him, you're not going to come up as an infielder. You need to be able to field the ball in the outfield. Now he's got back-to-back -back gold gloves. The problem is with Morrell, the bat is too good right now to put him in the minors. Like you just can't afford to have that bat off of your everyday lineup. Yeah. Um, the, the good thing is you do have a reliable option for those late innings, and we've seen Madrigal come in a few of these games, but at some point he's either going to drown or learn to swim out there, and I hope it's learn to swim and, and learn to swim soon. Um, but, yeah, that first base position was also a huge question mark, and it looks right now, I mean, the last two nights, Bush and Cooper have combined for six hits out of that first base spot, including mm -hmm. a home run, a triple. And then obviously Bush had some runs driven into uh, last night also. So, I mean, if that platoon continues to, to work, it looks like a really good idea. And I think hmm. um, a lot of people were probably calling for Cooper to be in the lineup today after three hits. Um, but if, if you're a guy like council who seems to trust the analytics and the lefty right matchup, in your mind, he got those three hits because it was a good matchup. And then you put Bush into a good matchup and he's got those three hits. So mm -hmm. if they're both hitting, that's a good problem. And hopefully Morel can figure out third and both guys can be in the lineup every day. Yeah. And that's why it's so important that Morel figure it out. Exactly. Because it, it does. It really makes the lineup just that much tougher with Morrell at third base because as much as I like watching Magical play the field and also that he's a contact guy, he, he just doesn't – Morrell is a game changer with that yeah. exit. He doesn't below. move the needle in no. the line. Yeah, right, exactly. But I like having both of those guys. Um, talking about guys, at the very, very beginning of the game, uh, how about Luke Little? As the opener, right? It's not, he's not really a starter for sake, right. right? He is what they call an opener. And we kind of knew that there was a possibility of that. But going back to uh, Kampka again with some of his great stuff. Yeah, uh, this is a cool one. Yeah. Uh, Luke Little, 
um, became the first Cubs pitcher to finish one game and start the next day's game since Warren Hacker on May 2nd, 1955. Uh, Hacker finished a suspended game uh, that day and tossed a complete game in the regularly scheduled one at Connie Mack Stadium in Philly. Okay, so yeah, just a little bit before back. our times. <laughs> <laughs> it's going back a few years. So Little comes in, blows gas, and then Ben Brown, um, his second time in there, you know, did fantastic, man. And and I know it was it was a little bit of a setup. He, he they wanted him to go through the lineup one time, you know, he he, he did that. Um, but four innings, three hits, one run, a walk, five strikeouts would have had to win. If the, you know, if obviously yeah. if the bullpen wouldn't have fallen apart, but uh, all in all, like that's the Ben Brown, the curveball was better. The slider was better. The fastball really was zipping, you know, in that game last night. And, it, and it's a good sign that he's going to have some confidence after Morell's bad plays at third base in Texas and then him getting rocked, you know? Yeah, I would have. I think I would have liked to see Little come out for that second inning and then start Ben Brown with seven, eight, nine, and yeah. then let him get through that. And and then maybe that adds you an extra inning where you save the back end of the bullpen and maybe don't blow this thing. But either way, they came out with the win, and both these young guys pitched great. You had two homegrown guys essentially um, come in and, and throw gas, and it's something that you haven't seen. Cubs fans should be super happy with the way this pitching infrastructure has turned in the last year or so. Um, I think kind of starting with steel and all the trickle down from that is we're finally developing pitchers. Like this is a big deal. And we went years of contention and even won a world series without any homegrown talent on the pitching side. And, and now this whole pitching staff is coming up pretty much through the roots, which is really fun to watch. You touched on Ben Brown a little bit yesterday Um, he's got some good stuff and I'm excited to see what he can turn into. I think these four innings might be enough for the next time around to give him the start and let, let him see how that goes, uh, if they need to, but either way, even if they do the opener and then straight to Ben Brown, he's a guy that I think we can have some confidence in when he's on the rubber. One thing that's kind of lost in the way that the game ended tonight that I do need to bring up Cubs just swept the Rockies. I yeah. mean, like, <laughs> let's not forget that, right? Yeah. Uh, Colorado comes to, to town. Chris Bryant was like 0 for 18 at one point. He got a couple hits tonight. So I hope he gets going, man. I, I love KB. I don't want him having success against us, but watching him and Baez struggle and look like crap, you know, I, I'm glad that he, you know, is go, at least leaving with some positivity because he was 0 for 18, got a couple of hits in the game. I, I'm always going to love Chris Bryant. This him. You know? Yeah. It, there's kind of two sides to it. If you're a fan and the one side is like, man, as much as that stung to get rid of these guys, it looked like they made the right call. Yeah. Um, but then the other side of it is these guys are always going to be Cubs legends. And as long as they're not playing the pinstripes, I'm going to be rooting for their success just mm-hmm. because they were such a vital part of what we were able to do in 2016 that I want to, you know, you get to know him, you get to know his family. You you want them to do well. You want Javi to do well. You want Rizzo, even though he's on the Yankees, to do well. And um, all these guys, just because they were they were Shorts. part of something that we were begging for for years and years and years. And um, I, I'm not going to be one of those guys that, you know, hates on a guy for going to get money elsewhere that we weren't going to give to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like you said, I, I'm, I'm rooting for him. I wish him nothing but the best. Bryant, I think above the other two are my, my favorite cub of my lifetime. So um, always good to see him back at Wrigley. Love that they gave him an ovation all three days. He definitely deserves it. I hope he gets the bat going too. Yeah. No telling what was really going on with those contract negotiations, but there was yeah, a time knows? when I heard the Cubs made a pretty good offer to him and, and they turned it down. And if he did, what a mistake, you know, cause I mean, he could still be playing third right now. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think he was the guy that you would have signed out of the group long term and rebuilt with him. And but you know, it didn't work out that way. The guy that we got is Kyle Hendricks. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's the last of of the Mohicans. He's the last of that of that breed. But Cubs are off today. Back in action again tomorrow. 
And that is the Cubs and the Dodgers, 120 at Wrigley. And it's a uh, watch party number one here on the Cubs baseball channel. Going to be fun. Yeah, I mean, you touched on it with the last uh, little banner. The Cubs swept the Rockies. Four-game winning streak, now one game back of the division because both the Brewers and the Pirates finally lost a game. Mm-hmm. They're undefeated for far too long, in my opinion. But um, as we had tomorrow, I think we got Bobby Miller pitching for the Dodgers. Uh, we haven't quite announced our rotation for the weekend, but my guess is it's Hendricks, Wicks, and Imanaga. That's just how the rest has looked Mm -hmm. so i think we're gonna have kyle hendricks who you just mentioned is the the last one standing from 2016 looks like he'll be on the bump for our first watch party and i'm pumped yeah make sure you check it out there it is 120 on friday we're just gonna sit here and watch the game and talk to you guys about watching the game you know so if you got the game and you don't want to hear the sound turn it down and hang with us and if you don't have the game then you know whatever if you put them both on and listen to both of them but we're going to be on here and uh talking to you and, and it's going to be fun do it for all the friday home days you know yeah it's going to be a blast it's yeah. uh it's basically like we're all bleacher bums and we're going to be talking to you guys <laughs> all game and uh it's going to be a great time maybe we'll get some peanuts going but hopefully <laughs> Keep Cracker the win streak going too. <laughs> Beer. I saw <laughs> the last thing I'm going to talk about is uh, I saw a, a Bleacher. What is it? Bleacher Nation uh, put this put this tweet out. They, they really retweeted somebody else that put a tweet out, and it was talking about how that you need you had to do nine hot dogs and nine beers in nine innings. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just thinking like, I think I could do it, but I just don't know like what the la- the, the late innings would be. Like, would yeah. I be more full or would I be more drunk? You know? I think it depends. I mean, with the nine beers, you get full really quick. So then trying to scarf a <laughs> hot dog down while you're drinking the beer, you're going to have to do it Joey Chestnut style and just like dip the hot dog in beer and then just inhale it. That might be the only way to do it. <laughs> Looking at it right now. I think now, we could probably do nine uh, a piece. So like four and a half hot dogs, four and a half beers. I think uh, we can do that. Done. You got, but if you do it, I mean, you know, like got to go all in. Get get a driver, ride the train. But I mean, <laughs> you can, you can. I don't think you do that if you're not sitting in the bleachers too. Like I, I don't know that that's a good challenge. You know, if you're in that those set that section of seats, yeah, where you got to call the hot dog guy over every <laughs> inning, <laughs> <and> like, annoy <laughs> everybody, pass it down, pass it down, pass it down. When the Cubs give you tickets, you sit like right behind home plate, but back you can see like Tom and all those guys down there, you know, like you don't want to be there. <laughs> like yeah, they, they come walking by and you're like on your like seventh beer, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, well, sir, how, many, <laughs> how many hot dogs can you order at once? The, the, the thing is, like, the, the the beer doesn't scare me. It's the hot dogs that scare me. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever ate more than two, so yeah. I don't know how I'm going to do nine. <laughs> that's that's a challenge that I'm wondering if anyone out there that's watching has completed. And I hope you had some people. Because you you if you did that challenge and it went wrong, you could ruin everyone's day. And yeah, that's why it yeah. has to be in the bleachers. <laughs> Everybody yeah. around you would care less if like you're in the, the bleachers. Yeah, all of a sudden, you're like, <laughs> like stand by me, the movie. <laughs> Just let it rip. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I saw that. Those guys do a, a really good job. I love looking at their stuff. So, all right, we'll, we'll talk to you guys again tomorrow unless something breaks. Uh, get in the comments section. Like and follow. Give us a thumbs up. Thanks for being here on the Cubs baseball channel. I mean, we're just getting started this season, but it has been really fun to talk to baseball with you guys every day. And welcome back to the show, Anthony. Good to, that now you're uh, you're feeling like a regular now, right? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, got the W flag behind me now. Two and O. Two and O. So gonna have to keep that going. Um, and and fly it, baby. Yeah, I love it. All right, fly the W, guys. Go Cubs. 